And Watkins sees this one sail over his head. The Clemson Tigers will start from their 25 yard line. Taj Boyd, what a year. Almost 300 yards passing the game, 28 touchdown passes. Both lead the conference, 19 and 5 as a starter, but undefeated here at home. And 65 career touchdown passes. That is a school record. You go back to last year against North Carolina State on the road in Raleigh, and this offense turned the ball over three times uh, inside of this territory right here during that ball game. It was 21 points for North Carolina State, and their longest offensive drive was 18 points. So protecting the ball early, obviously key. Boyd quarterback draw, shakes a tackle. 35 40 yard line first down Clemson and this is a this is a play that is shows you the difference between Taj Boyd of 2011 and Taj Boyd of 2012 last year at this time Boyd was about 240 pounds he's under 220 he's a better runner and it is such a nice wrinkle to this offense they've added Boyd throws Watkins makes the catch he's up to the 46 47 yard line Take a look at the impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Left tackle Brandon Thomas. This offensive front in general playing very well, but with all of the pressure that NC State brings from the outside, Thomas is key. And for Rashard Hall, it's reading the eyes of Glennon. Glennon, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Hall very good at picking off the ball. Ellington trailing his blocker right on the back of the left tackle Brandon Thomas. On his hip, he got as much out of it as he could, and another first down for the Tigers. Sterling Lucas, the middle linebacker, made the stop. There's good news for the Tigers because Watkins is out there. He had been troubled by an ankle. He has been suspended, injured, or sick almost all year long. And here's Watkins on the flanker screen across the 40 down to the 37. Good block by Brandon Ford. The tight end got out in front of him. And one of the hard things when you're defending Clemson is Sammy Watkins doesn't play a ton. Of course, he wasn't back into game shape until just a few weeks ago. You mentioned the suspension and the illness. But when he's in the game, you know he's going to get the ball. It's just Chad Morris does it, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, so many different ways. It's tough to defend. Boyd with a short set. Watkins makes the catch out of bounds at the 29 yard line. First third down of the game and this is strength against strength because Clemson third in the country with 53 percent conversions but NC State is third in the country defending third down and the hard part for the Wolfpack defense right now this is a place where they could be Clemson thinking four down so they could take a shot here. To the wide side of the field incomplete fans wanted a flag they're not going to get it. Justin Burris on the coverage of Jerron Brown. And he got there just in time or was it early. I think it's just in time and, and I and nice Brown was going for the flag on his way down to the ground but that was a great break and great timing to bring on a long field goal try by Captain Zara. 46 yard attempt as long this year is 50. He had made 20 straight until he missed a 46 yarder at Wake Forest. He's good. Chandler Catanzaro, the 6 2, 195 pound junior, gives Clemson the lead on the opening drive. 12.56 to go, first quarter. 3 0 Tigers. Chad Morris talking to his offensive guys who got off to a quick start. Janine said North Carolina State got the locker room speech about starting fast. Clemson may have gotten the same speech. Well, and I think NC State lucky that that drive, which was starting to look kind of easy for Clemson, got stalled once it got inside the 30, and you get out with three. It's like there was a haymaker coming, and I think they just caught a jab instead of the haymaker with three points. Spencer Benton will kick off Tobias Palmer who had a hundred yard kickoff return a week ago waits a yard deep in the end zone and he'll have a chance to return just shy of the goal line has a big hole up the middle 
and hit high and dragged down by the kicker. That's one reason they like Spencer Benton on the kickoff team. He will hit somebody. Mike Lennon is opening the eyes of NFL scouts. He trails only Taj Boyd in ACC passing yards per game. In two years as the starter, he's already number four on NC State's career pass yardage list. And since he took over for Russell Wilson, he's thrown 53 touchdown passes in two years. NC State's problem has been running the ball. The true freshman Shadrach Thornton will start at tailback. And Thornton is gang tackled after a game, maybe a yard. And that's been such a difficult thing for Mike Glennon. When you look at this season coming in, they've lost a good portion of their offensive line. Zach Allen has been out, their best run blocker for several weeks. There weren't many receivers coming back with experience. Then you lose two running backs. Mustafa Green is dismissed, and James Washington gets an injured knee out for the year. I think for the elite quarterbacks in this country, Glennon's had the most to overcome. Throws this one short, intended for Underwood, who's his second leading receiver. Let's take a look at the Chick fil A impact players. For NC State, the best receiver, Brian Underwood, a guy that you can see Glennon goes to, needs him on third and occasionally fourth down, like against Florida State. And up front, Daryl Cato Bishop has to be a guy who gets something going. NC State will blitz a ton. But I think as this game wears on, they're going to need to get pressure with just movement of their front four, not necessarily pressure. Because with the offensive line that Clemson has, I think they'll be able to pick up a lot of those blitzes. Glennon will go to the shotgun on third and nine. Good throw to the outside, but incomplete. Gary Peters may have gotten a hand on it. It looked like the ball got in there. And Glennon, a big enough arm to throw from one side to the other. Well, it looked like the ball was thrown on time, but that was just a terrific break by Gary Peters. Of course, Darius Robinson out at the corner position with a leg injury. Awfully close to getting there early, but of course, we're watching that slow motion. But Gary Peters, nice break on the ball. Watkins is deep. Bauman to punt. He averages a little bit better than 40 yards a kick. He's had to punt 60 times this year. Hangs this one up. Watkins. Fair catch at the 33 yard line. 35 yard kick, but no return. 3 0 Clemson. Tigers will start from their own 34 yard line. Ellington, huge hole. Holy cow, still on his feet. Down to the 43 yard line. You could have driven the proverbial truck through that one. Watch the right side of the offensive line for Clemson just crush the defense. Actually, you know what? That was a defensive tackle stunt on the inside there that cleared the lane. When you move your front as much as NC State does, that's exactly what happens sometimes. That wasn't as much movement as a called stunt. Board with a play action fake. He throws to Ellington. Runs right by one linebacker, Ricky Dowdy, and picks up another big chunk. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, guys, the first thing NC State defensive coordinator Mike Archer asked his defense when they came off the field before was, can you see me okay, and are you hearing each other okay? Watch these guys on the field. They will be watching Archer. They've spent a lot of time this week working on signals and communication because of how loud it is here. A couple on a running play. Thomas Teal got the tackle. And last week against Maryland, red zone has been obviously so much better in TD percentage. That you get near 80% touchdown percentage once you cross the 20 yard line. That's uh, that's elite. 70, 75% is a goal. 80% is elite. Boyd after the fake on the keep. Boyd inside the five. First and goal, Clemson. Well, this is just a whole different guy than NC State saw last year at quarterback. Remember, Clemson went into this NC State game last year at 9-1. and one, And, yeah, it was it was a different 9-1 and one than I think you sense this team but is this year. I think this team is much better than the 9-1 and one they were last year. But a lot of it is just the ability of Boyd now to, to be a positive runner and, and with the, the additional speed with the loss to wait's a big deal. 
Boyd walks in. Daryl Smith, the fullback, cleared the way. There was nobody left. Well, the coaching staff told the players, you got to come out on fire. Nobody's, nobody's got any matches yet. <laughs> Just the, the quarterback run game. If you can get, if you have a quarterback that you can trust that has a good sense of the run game, you get inside the five. That just adds such a, a, a tough element to defend. Cat and Sorrow pumps it through. Chad Morris, one of the bright minds in this game, already has seen his offense put up 10. Clemson continues to move the ball almost at will. Two minutes, 21 seconds on a nine play drive. Clemson already with 112 yards in total offense in five minutes. If you're an NC State fan, here's the bad news. That's a pace of 1,344 yards. I think they'll fall short of that. But this is an awfully good. Well, as offense. a play by play guy, I hope so. <laughs> You've got your throat loss and you're sitting right there in front. Benton to kick the Palmer on a nice return before. Takes it on the run, short kick. Runs into his own man, taken down near the 15 yard line. And if you're Mike Glennon, you have to hope to be able to make some plays for this ball club. Thornton. Yikes. The run game has not been good, to be kind. Jonathan Willard made that last tackle. They are 107th in the country and rushing out of 120 teams. They had a four game stretch before the Wake Forest contest where they only averaged 48 yards rushing a game. For everybody else on the team, for the lineman to block, Glennon to throw, and then the receiver drops a ball where he's wide open. And All that, 11 guys have to do their job together. And that throw there was open and not a great throw overthrown. So you hear all the time, it's one mistake leads to another. That time Glennon had a little bit of pressure, but he's typically very good pressure. But they had a corner route that looked open and he missed it. Bauman to Punta Watkins. High and very short. Watkins fair catch all the way up near the 49 yard line. Only a 32 yard punt, but no return. Boyd on the option read to McDowell. They make it look so easy. Brandon Bishop, the free safety, had to make the tackle downfield. Clemson right at the line of scrimmage. Well, it's ready blocked, to go. It's blocked very well, and the problem is the safety coming downhill, Earl Wolf, doesn't quite break down, so then you get the additional yardage with the missed tackle. McDowell again, stutter steps this time, picks up only two before he is stopped. This is a very aggressive defense. John Tenuta, the veteran defensive coach, is the linebacker coach. Mike Archer, equally experienced as the defensive coordinator. Boyd under pressure. Runs away from it and forced out of bounds. Dowdy came from the outside and forced the play. And how, if this was 2011, Dowdy makes that sack. You're right. Because at this point last year, Taj Boyd admittedly had let some of the things go to, ahead with, to his head with all of the accolades they were starting to get. He gained some weight. That time, Dowdy had him dead to rights. He, he decided to take off, and he's just a different player this season. Third down for Boyd. Hopkins is the single receiver to the near side. And Boyd is looking that way. And Hopkins makes the diving catch. And now they're going to say it's incomplete. Amerson was on him. And NC State, again, catches a jab instead of a haymaker. As Catanzaro has to come out. Good protection, ball thrown nice to the outside, and that was by Amerson, very good defense. Got his arm over the top, and that's the one thing Amerson is known for, 6'3 with long arms. That was good defense. He has already hit from 46. This will be 43 yards from Katanzaro.
And he is two for two on long ones. The Tigers extend their lead to 13 midway first quarter. So far, North Carolina State has run the ball twice for three yards. They're 0 for 4 passing with two drops. If they don't want this to get ugly, they've got to step up the pace on offense. But two field goals instead of two touchdowns on drives that looked like they could end that way. So the defense, even through their struggles, have had a couple of early stops that at least have kept this where you get a score here and you're right back in it. Tobias Palmer. Nice cut and lost his footing and went down at the 23. And C State will start from its 23 yard line. Thornton is the tailback. Two tight ends, two wideouts. Glennon airs it out. Caught, dropped, and caught again by Palmer. Touchdown. 77 yards. So you go from three yards in total offense in the first two possessions to 77 on this one. Gary Peters was the guy who was beaten, and Tobias Palmer, maybe he wouldn't have come back to the bench if he'd have dropped that one. <laughs> hey, well, he won't get credit for two catches, I know that, just the one. But because their defense held, all of a sudden, you're right back in the ballgame. This felt like it was going to start really running away from NC State. What a huge turn of momentum for them. Sadie for the point after and 81,000 people just got very quiet. Well, Gary Peters has one on one and that's an out and up by Palmer. Very close to going out of bounds, but if he would have, he would have been forced out by Peters in college football. You could come back, but Gary Peters he sold out on the outcut. He, that was just bad technique by Peters. He could not recover. And uh, for Palmer, because he almost drops it, comes up with something that may be in the running for a top 10 type of play tonight on SportsCenter. He is much more athletic than he seems to be. He doesn't pass the eye test. Well, he's almost 6'7", so it's hard to see yeah. a guy having good, quick feet that's that tall, but he truly does. There's nothing wrong with the arm, though. No. That thing was a beauty on the money. Boyd throws to Watkins. That was a backward pass. Well, the NC State coaches want a lost yardage play. But it the, was. The, the side official judge. official there. I, I, that was a backwards pass, but the side judge gave an incomplete pass when it ended, so it would only have been probably a yard or two of lost yardage. Well, you know, after looking at it, right on the line. Pretty close. Yeah, but a yard or two, I don't think it makes much of a difference. So either team. way. Yeah. Boyd hangs in the pocket. And over the left shoulder of Sammy Watkins. And, and here's one covered of the, by Burris. You know, there's a lot of talk about Taj Boyd. Obviously, he has NFL ability. He's just a junior. And I think there's one thing that Boyd, and, and I suspect Boyd will come back because this team next year is going to be, it's going to start in the top five, and I think they're going to be good enough to make a run at a national championship. But uh, I think Boyd can watch Glennon. Glennon on that throw a lot of times will underthrow that ball. And that's something I think just over time Boyd could start working on as well. Clemson one out of three on third down. Now they're going to be one out of four after that pass is completed for very little gain to Brandon Ford. And this was the matchup we were going to keep an eye on because Clemson third in the country in third down conversions. NC State third in the country preventing third down conversions. And I think so far for Mike Archer win across the board. They big drives ended in threes and now you get a three and out after a big touchdown and some good field position here. Richard Smith after a bad punt into Clemson territory at the 49. Glennon again. Palmer, touchdown! He beat Bashad Freeland. You take those two passes from Glennon. You cannot throw that pass any better. You can't. This game was starting to feel like it was going to be 35 to 7 at halftime. 
Clemson's way. And all of the sudden, with an extra point and two spectacular throws to the same guy, Mike Lennon's got his team right back in the lead. This crowd is stunned, and I don't blame them. <laughs> Their first six plays got three yards. The last two, 126 and two touchdowns. That's an upgrade. Well, they had Gary Peters on that side to play before. Now they move uh, Breland over there. Remember, Breland, a guy who missed the Duke game, played a little bit against Maryland last week with a groin injury, and he just got beat. There was no safety over the top. Well, a guy who's going to make a bunch of money in the NFL next year happened, I think, a quarterback for NC State. You got that right. And now the Tigers are going to have to regroup as they'll start from their own 25. Boyd. Amerson comes up to make the stop as he got to the 41. Sterling Lucas, the middle linebacker, was trailing the play. And that was a three-man defensive line front where the two tackles went all the way to the left. The defensive end, Cato Bishop, came all the way back, and it was picked up. And then what happens sometimes because of that movement, big lanes open up. It really is hard to keep your lane integrity when you stump this much. Another third down. Watkins sort of hesitated on his pattern, then had to restart his body and couldn't hold the ball. Pretty good throw from Taj Boyd. Should have made the catch. It's unbelievable how efficient Clemson looked at the beginning of this game and now look like they can't get out of their own way. Benton to punt. Smith is deep for NC State. Very short, very high. Makes a big Clemson bounce. Glennon, plenty of time. This time it's not the bomb, but it's the Palmer, and he's out to the 45. Well, that, even though it's become the Tobias Palmer show, that's that play's got to be a little disappointing after Palmer runs by Gary Peters in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and then he spins around Bashad Breeland for back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. Looks like Tobias Palmer, the senior, is starting to become the guy that Glennon is focused in on. You know, until you really start studying a team and a player, it's hard to really know everything about them to let this play go. That was intended for Underwood. A little miscommunication there. but Yes, it was, and Brewer had good position. Until you really understand what a team has been through with injuries and suspensions, and it last year for NC State, it was everybody on defense getting hurt. This year, it's been on the offensive line, and then, of course, they had to finally dismiss Mustafa Green for multiple violations of breaking team rules, who was their best running back. And to see what Glennon's been able to do despite all of that has been incredibly impressive. Glennon, good protection again. Keeps the play alive. Gets the completion to Thornton out of the backfield. Thornton won't go down. Shadrach Thornton very close to the sticks which are between the 31 and 32 yard line. That was really nice pocket work by Glennon. Sidestep, step up, watch his feet. Very close to the ground as the pocket closes. The thing you do is you move up. Most guys want to bounce backwards there. You buy so much more time if you step up. Third down and a yard. Thornton has it and more. Boy, if they can get anything out of the ground game, what a huge boost it would be. And you think about Thornton. Here's a guy who didn't play at all in the first three games. He was going to redshirt as a true freshman. Right. Mustafa Green gets the boot. James Washington gets hurt. Tony Creasy's been banged up and banged up a little bit today. So a guy who was looking to be a redshirt and mostly a scout team guy has to then come in. And the coach has been very impressed. He picked it up quickly. But a guy that they didn't even expect to have to lean on they're having to lean on down the stretch. This is only the second start of his career. Nice cut to get to the outside and then shows some toughness, lowers his shoulder and pounds his way down to the 18. And when you talk to Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, one of the brightest offensive minds, I think, in the entire game, 
Runs a little different offense, obviously, than Chad Morris, but that same type of guy, just a, a brainiac when it comes to offense. They said when they saw Thornton early in camp that he showed some flash, so they knew they could get something out of him if they needed it once he got comfortable. To the end zone, the diving catch is made for a touchdown with Shard Smith. Boy, give Glennon some credit on that one. And this huge crowd is just stunned. Well, Dabo Sweeney has said this is a different team than they had last year when they kind of fell apart in this game. We're about to find out. Ballman for the point after. And North Carolina State, after looking inept, on its first two possessions, has scored touchdowns on its next three. I don't think I have ever seen a turnaround in a ball game like this. It looked like Clemson was totally dominating everything and might win 60 to nothing, and all at once, kaboom. How many yards were they on track for when you were 1,344? Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to fall a little short. And if you look at the things that this team have been through, has been through the last two years, last year all the injuries on defense, this year it's just it's comical what happened on offense if you're not a Wolfpack fan, but to come out and it, they, it could end up with a win against Florida State and a win against Clemson. That's a pretty good season yeah. considering what went down. Big third down. Pressure coming. Boyd hangs in the pocket. Watkins open, passes under, thrown and intercepted. Justin Burris picks it off. Burris, midfield, gets a block. And down to the 35-yard line. A 37-yard return after Taj Boyd's 10th interception of the season. And if you're Clemson, things are coming apart at the seam. And this was a good read by the quarterback. He had the post for a touchdown. He threw it a little late, and he threw it a little short, and he threw it behind the receiver. If he throws this ball just a touch earlier, and more accurately, I think it's a walk-in touchdown, but it's a little slow to Watkins, which allows Burris, the freshman, to make up the distance. Unfortunately, that was just not a great throw by Taj Boyd. If you want action, I hope you've enjoyed the first quarter. Glennon comes out throwing, sideline complete to Peyton. When a quarterback gets hot, there is almost nothing you can do to stop him. And the safety's now for Clemson. That time there was a safety at 25 yards in the middle of the field. I think Brent Venables got tired of what was going on in the safeties and said, I'm just going to stick a couple of guys back there, and we're not moving from about 15 to 20 yards back. Glennon again looking for protection. Throws almost intercepted off of the hands of Xavier Brewer. Well, that was a complete miscommunication between Glennon and his receiver. Glennon was expecting a fade. The receiver, number 88, Quentin Payton, stopped on a hitch. And NC State very lucky that that was not an INT. And usually it's the receiver's fault. Second down from the 20-yard line. Keep an eye on Palmer. He's at the top of the screen. Draw up by Thornton. Nearly broke it the entire way. Got down to the 14-yard line. They need to reach the 10 for a first down. Boy, I love that play to get to third and short because now with Glenn and the way he's playing, you can call anything you want. And I would think for NC State, even if they don't pick it up here, don't be surprised if they go for it because Tom O'Brien's not thinking three. I think he's got to think seven. Clemson's going to turn it on eventually. An unbelievable change of momentum here. It looked like Clemson was going to run NC State out of the building, and then Mike Glennon and Tobias Palmer hook up twice. That one, he only got caught one catch. That was Palmer. And now, after three touchdown passes and taking the lead, NC State right on the doorstep again. The first quarter had a split personality. It looked like Clemson might score 60 on NC State. Now North Carolina State's turnaround looked like they might get 80 against Clemson.
390 yards of total offense in the first quarter between the two teams. And NC State right here bidding for more. They're facing a third and four. Thornton is the single setback. And he'll get it on the toss. Boy, if he had gone outside, the defender slipped and fell. He was wide open, could have run all day long. And I think at this point you have to kick it if you're NC State. I think if you pick, if it was fourth and short, I think you'd consider going for it. But now take these points. But you're right, Mike. That was Thornton. He went to cut it up a little too soon. If he would have shuffled one more step, he might have got the edge in the pylon for six. Nicholas Sadie from 32 yards out. He's at 10 of 16 this year. And he got it through the right upright. 32 yard field goal and 24 unanswered points from the Wolfpack. Boyd had the great start. Glennon has really caught fire. And it's 24 13 North Carolina State over number 11 Clemson. Watkins running start at the four. Can't get outside or a field enough to use the speed. He gets to the 22. Clemson has not been able to get out of their own way offensively since then. Boyd only two out of his last eight. He's clearly lost his throwing rhythm. Here he's going to run for good yardage. Taken down from behind by Art Norman. But a good run by Taj Boyd. Well, Chad Morris has been calling Boyd's number, but this one was a pull down and run. Nothing was there, and what they're trying to get number 10 to do, just be really decisive. Humphreys flanker screen across the 40. A very quick wide receiver, Sterling Lucas, the middle linebacker, took him down. Chad Morris, one of the best communicators in the business. And they chart everything the quarterbacks do. Their play fakes, their footwork. They work so relentlessly on technique. Ellington should have a first down at near the 45. Let's check in with Janine Edwards. And guys, you can see that Clemson is going pretty fast right now. Offensive coordinator Chad Morris was just telling them they've got to play right now like it's the fourth quarter. He wants them upping the tempo because they have not been matching NC State's intensity. Ellington on the delay. Across the 40. Ellington heard a whistle. He thought it was because he moved early, and he did. But nobody threw a flag, so Ellington reset himself and goes 20 yards. That should have been a penalty against the Tigers. Boy, that was just a huge break for Clemson. Good move at the line of scrimmage, though. They, you know, they say running backs make someone miss. Ball comes out. Hopkins, they're going to say incomplete. They will. And my question is, how do you miss Ellington moving in the backfield? You should. Mechanically, as an official, there should be a set of eyes on the backfield. So that was a miss. So as Ellington comes over the sideline working on, looks like he's taking some pads off. And boy, that was awfully close to a catch and a fumble. It was not, but uh, closer than I thought. McDowell, 20, 15, slam down at the 12. McDowell had only carried 61 times coming into this ball game, getting a chance to run some here, and he's done well. I love this little cutback right at the end by McDowell. How many guys get to here and they just try to outrun everybody, but he slowed down as he saw the safety bishop coming over and picked up another five or six yards. Nice cut. Four carries, 46 yards. Humphreys. The flanker takes it. He's inside the 10 near the seven yard line. And Humphrey's a guy who's starting to get into the mix. Of course, we talked so much about Hopkins and Sammy Watkins, but this is a guy last week against Maryland. Led the team with five receptions. Now you can see Chad Morris starting to get him involved in some of the flyby stuff that they do here. McDowell is back in. 
Boyd with a keeper goes out in the flat to the tight end. Ford. Touchdown. The converted wide receivers, 240 pounds, took that one to the goal line and got in. And here, Clemson going for two. I always think, I get it, You two gives you 21, you're only down by three, but I always feel like these are a 50-50 proposition. I think take the one because you're going to be chasing that two if you don't get it. I always feel like just go ahead and kick it. Boyd, empty backfield. Got Hopkins in the end zone, throws underneath, knocked away. Broken up by Brandon Bishop. Ford was waiting in the end zone for the throw, and it got there a little bit late. On a perfect day. About 61 degrees. Tobias Palmer. He's already had a monster game and cuts it outside. To midfield. Saving tackle by Brewer. Tony Creasy has checked in as the tailback. He'll go out in the pattern and they'll throw to him. Creasy able to stay in bounds until he reached the 44 yard line. Big third down here. Three man rush. Glennon trying to take off. Dives forward. He's going to be a yard shy. And I think you go for it here. Fourth and one on the 41 yard line. You punt it, you get it inside. If you get a touchback, it's only 21 yards gained. This is not a game where you can play slow. This was a snap decision, I think. Yeah, I think I think you absolutely go here. The problem for NC State is they haven't been good running the ball between the tackles. So this is a hard call for Data Bible. I think you still run it, though. Creasy is the tailback. He'll get the carry. And Creasy didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Didn't really hit it up in there. Well, watch the penetration on short yardage type of plays. If there's an inside run game, it's all about penetration by your defensive linemen. And that time, number 91, Josh Watson, does a great job of blowing up the puller. The back block doesn't work, and you also had Brady Jarrett in there. That's been the problem for NC State when they needed a yard inside the tackles. I haven't been able to get it. Credit Clemson's defensive line, though. Nicely played. And when you see, there's Ellington breaking away from a tackle. Another still on his feet. 40, 35. When you saw that replay, you knew why Creasy really didn't slam it up into the hole because there wasn't one. Well, and, you know, we saw that a couple of weeks ago with Oklahoma. That's a delayed play for NC State. And then they don't get it, and all of a sudden, Ellington, who's having a wonderful game himself, all of a sudden, finishing some runs. Watkins flanker screen. Good block by Ford. Goes inside the 30. Seven catches for Sammy Watkins. Anytime you can get him the ball out in space, you've done a good thing. And you're starting to see... They're using him in different ways, getting him involved a little more. Now, Mike Archer, the defense coordinator, has to worry about number two, running the post, running the screen, running the fly sweep. They get him involved a lot of ways. This one is tipped and nearly intercepted, intended for Hopkins. Ricky Dowdy with the diving try for the interception. And that's what the defensive linemen like Brian Slayer taught to do. When they see that short drop, they know they're not going to get there. Get that. Gotta read up. it. And now you've got third and short. Third down has been NC State's winning margin. One out of six. Not this time. Watkins untouched. Touchdown. Brandon Ford, the tight end who was split out, threw him a good block, but there was no help on the perimeter. What a game. Holy cow. Well, and, and now Clemson is in that 
mode of chasing that two-point conversion. I know it's tempting to continue to go for the two-point conversion, but I think at some point you just got to kick the PAT. But Sammy Watkins, you can just see when, when he goes to step on the accelerator, he just has a different gear. I'm not sure he got out of about third gear that time because it was so wide open. Didn't have to. Boyd under pressure. Throws to Brandon Ford for the two-point conversion. We've still got 10 minutes and 28 seconds to go in the first half. And it's 27 to 24. Scoreboard may run out of lights. The only thing we're missing are fancy uniforms. Back to our track meet on grass. It's 27 24. We've only played four minutes and 32 seconds into the second quarter. Are you kidding? I think somebody should go put on mirror helmets. <laughs> Or somebody ought to play defense. Tobias Palmer, who already has 249 all-purpose yards in this game, will not be able to add to that total. Thornton is back in. Pressure coming. Caught by the tight end, Carter. The defender never saw the ball, yes, and Glennon dropped it over Shuey's shoulder right into Carter's hand. What a throw. I, I don't, you, this is good defense. The, the blitz is getting there. It's wonderful coverage by Shuey as he goes to find the ball was when he missed it. The only thing Shuey did wrong there was he looked just a touch late. What concentration by the tight end to make that catch. And a good throw by Glennon, too. You know you've got a trailer because of the blitz. You know you've got if you've got vertical, a vertical route. You know that the linebacker's going to have his back turned. So don't overthrow it. Give him a chance. Yeah, absolutely. That was a wonderful throw. And again, the only thing Shuey did wrong was look a half a second late. Otherwise, he had perfect coverage. Pressure coming again. Carter has it intercepted in front of him. Picked off by Clemson. Rashard Hall with his fourth interception, and that was a lazy throw by Glennon. He was trying to fit it in again and came up short. I'm not so sure that Rashard Hall... No, nope, I thought Hall held on Carter. He did not. Hall did a wonderful job, and this was not a great throw by Glennon. For a moment there, I thought it looked like Hall maybe got away with a hold, but he's able to make contact before the ball in his air. He did not grab the shirt of the tight end, and that ball was underthrown severely. NC State has done an outstanding job defensively, as we told you they probably would on third down, but not this time. And Hopkins makes the catch out at the 37. That's his first grab, a guy who had 66 catches and almost 1,100 yards coming in. Wonderful route by DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, you hear what sounds like booze. He's known as Nuke by the hometown fans here. But one-on-one -on -one working against Amerson just ran him off and made a nice cut. Boyd again. This one is tipped and tended for Hopkins. Amerson got there. Got a hand on it. And, and this is where Amerson can be so dangerous. Remember, this is a young man who had 13 interceptions last year, 17 on his career. And when they were talking to the offensive players from Clemson, they kept saying, look, number one's not had a great year. We understand that. But know that the young man has some ability. That time, made a nice play on it. Boyd, pump fake. Hopkins wide open. Hopkins. Touchdown. That is the move that has killed Emerson all year long. He wants to jump the route. So if you give him a double move, you're wide open, and that's the tenth touchdown pass he's given up. And what did Chad Morris call the play before? A runoff hitch to pick up the yardage. They look like they're going to run the runoff hitch again, but it's a hitch and go and a very easy pitch and catch. I just don't see many teams that are going to be able to stop this offense with another year under its belt and guys like Hopkins and Boyd and Watkins and this offensive line. I think it was a great point that you made. They ran the play. The play before the touchdown pass was the one that set it up. Mm -hmm. Sure, you want to get 10, 12 yards out of that. That's just fine. 
but you're doing it for a reason, and the reason is to suck in the defense, and they did just that. Well, and they also saw Emerson be very aggressive on those throws. Palmer. Boy, this kid's having a heck of a day, taking down to 20 this time. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 20 of the kicking team. 15 yards, first down. Robert, thanks very much. Big penalty against Clemson on the tick kickoff, and to take it from the 20 to the 35 yard line. Yeah, you've, you just can't finish that play if you're Latique Townsend. You just have to let that go. Play's over. Doesn't matter what's going on in the pile. Just let that go. The kind of thing gets you thrown out of the ball game. And now for NC State with two minutes, 14 seconds left. All of their timeouts. Boy, Dabo was really letting them have it as he should. It's a huge play that gives NC State field position it shouldn't have. Loose ball. Looks like Clemson has it, and they do. Malachi Goodman came flying around the corner, and Malachi got a hand on Glennon. He coughed it up. Goodman, a guy who Brent Venables and the defensive staff have been waiting all year for his productivity to match his ability. This is a very powerful big man. Good hand slap pushes, gets underneath. Glennon could not step up because there was very good pressure in the middle there by Josh Watson. So because of the pressure by Watson, Glennon not able to step up, and Goodman gets the sack and the forced fumble. Corey Crawford with the recovery. Sammy Watkins, another flanker screen. Boy, you know NC State has studied film. They know this is coming, and they try to get enough bodies on the outside to cover that. And that, that, you know, when you watch a pass rush, it is about the entire rush. And Goodman had a nice rush, but really give a lot of credit to Watson on the inside, who had whipped the right guard, and therefore Glennon not able to step up into the pocket. Boyd. That's going to be a first down down at the 10 and a really good game for Brandon Ford, whose season got off to a tough start when he had five drops in the opening ball game. So they ignored him a lot. And he got banged up a little bit in the ballgame we did against Georgia Tech earlier in the year. But you start to see, we talk about arm strength for Glennon. Number 10 for Clemson's got a little arm strength. Yes, too. he does. Ellington. Maybe a yard on that one. Right into the teeth. And I think if you're, State and if you're NC State, you've got to start thinking about a timeout here. As a matter of fact, I think you should get one at this point because this clock, I don't think Clemson's going to be in a super hurry between plays here. You're just letting this whole thing burn off. Pressure coming on Boyd. Great job to pick it up. There goes Taj Boyd. The middle of the field was wide open because they blitzed and didn't get there. And when Boyd saw a gap in the line, he had nothing but green grass in front of him. And when you blitz your second level, there's nobody there to ghost to shadow with the, uh, the uh, quarterback, and that's exactly what happened. The point after is good. What a first half. 41-24. Clemson had 441 yards on 61 plays. 61. This crowd really breathing a sigh of relief. Let's go down to Janine. Dabo, I don't know about you, but that has been a crazy half after some huge momentum turning plays by your defense. What else has helped turn this thing for you guys? Well, you know, listen, that's a good football team, and, and we knew they were going to make some plays. That quarterback is outstanding. Fortunately, we were able to kind of start getting a little bit of pressure, make him throw in a little early. You know, we, we hung in there, weathered the storm. Offense, you know, got back on track. I thought it was a big score when we came down and got back down by five. That was a big answer. 
Uh, but the two turnovers are the story of the game for us this half. Defensively, you know, really poor coverage early. I mean, they had three big plays for touchdowns where we did a just terrible job. But, hey, we came back, we settled down, weathered the storm. We've had two turnovers. Both of them led to points. And they're just playing, you know, good, enthusiasm, enthusiastic football, and that's what it's going to take. Well, if the first half is any indication, we can't wait for the second. Thanks, Coach. Thank We're at the half, and this is the ACC on ESPN. We're at Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers lead it 41-24 to at the half. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm tired. <laughs> that, was <laughs> that, was longest, that was the longest. That was the longest first half in captivity and it's 41 to 24 and it just kept going like this and when it started going like that was when nc state was down 14 nothing excuse me 13 nothing because it was two field goals and a touchdown right. for clemson now down 17 getting the ball back they need a little of that glennon magic if they don't score on this drive i just don't think clemson's going to slow down much offensively so i want to put it all on this drive for nc state but you kind of feel like it's now or never now, Clemson always has its foot on the gas, and I'm sure that they will the entire second half. Palmer is deep to receive the second half kickoff. Five yards deep, he takes a knee as we check in with Janine Edwards. Well, Mike and Ed, if you think that the NC State coaches aren't happy right now, you're right. They're really not happy. Defensive coordinator Mike Archer told me, you know what? We are still having problems communicating. We've got to do a better job getting the calls. We've got to do a better job tackling. And head coach Tom O'Brien told me, hey, this is where we need it. We need to come out quick. We need to score. Clemson and us have exchanged making runs. It's our turn to make a run. And he also told me defensively they've got to do a better job getting to top. Boyd. And Janine, you're right. It has been a game of runs. And one of the guys I've really been impressed with in this game, Ed Cunningham, is Thornton. Yeah, he has hard. run hard. He is, for the most part, he's hit the right holes and he's thrown some great blocks and pass protection. And here he goes again. Thornton across midfield to the Clemson 49 yard line. And you can't point it out enough that Thornton was a young man, a true freshman, who was likely headed for a red shirt. Mustafa Green was the starting running back at the beginning of the season was thrown off the team for multiple rules violations. James Washington, who was a leading rusher last year with Green out with an injury, then injures his knee. And now Tony Creasy hasn't been able to play much. I think still battling a little foot injury. Leonard with time throws underneath Thornton. Well, he just refuses to go down easily as Jonathan Willard finally dragged him down. It'll be third down. And you have to think you're going to go for it on fourth if you don't get it here. Field goal, I think field goal just does nothing for you at this point. The ball game really comes from playing on offense. Especially, you've seen him score 41 points in the first half. You can't have this illusion in your mind that you can stop him in the second half. So maybe this is a, a, a place where you could take a little play action chance here. Pressure coming. They got him from behind. The blitz from Vic Beasley. That's his sixth sack of the season, and Glennon never saw him. Well, this quick was confusion on who to block. Because of the stack here, Beasley's the guy with his hand on the ground. The offensive line goes to slide, and that was the left guard, R.J. Mattis, who another guy came inside, so Mattis didn't bump out and block Beasley. That was pretty simple. Sadie will try one from 49. He is hit from 32. This is right on the edge of his range, so sometimes this ball will go low. And that was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Ed Cunningham, I think you're absolutely right. He tried to drive it to get the extra distance. And it's a big stand by Clemson. And that's twice on third down where NC State, one time they get back out of field goal range, and this time because of the sack, they back up low kick and it gets blocked. Got a beautiful shot. Look at the number of plays for Clemson. 61 in the first half. 61 plays. Ellington. 62 is pretty good. Ellington, a guy, a senior who has. Obviously, starting to 
scouts are probably starting to look at this young Barry. Very explosive. You know, earlier in the year we were talking to Bud Foster as it looks like he might have a little bit of a lift. But Bud Foster, defense coordinator for Virginia Tech, said, I know everyone wants to talk about the other guys, but 23 to, to Bud Foster, Virginia Tech's the guy who makes this thing go a little bit. He is a very, very dangerous runner across midfield to the 48-yard line. He's number four all-time on their rushing list. Third in the ACC this year, averaging 83 and a half yards a game. He's already gone over the 100-yard mark in this one. 14 carries for 104. Comes over with a little bit of a limp. It doesn't look like it's anything major. But, you know, from earlier in the year watching until now, it looks like he's really worked on his patience. It seems to be cutting more crisply. More patient for his blocks to set up. Humphreys jet sweep. Well, he's got some quickness, doesn't he? And the previous two games we did, we saw very little of Humphreys. And what they're obviously doing is adding layers to this offense. Well, that's the scary part as you start going forward. And of course, Chad Morris is going to start becoming fodder for head coach discussions, of you course. Bet. And he's made no bones about it. That that's in his career plan. Boyd after the pump fake touchdown. Martavis Bryant about as wide open as you could get. Was it the pump fake that did it? Probably. They have been so vulnerable to double moves. Catanzaro for the point after. Another perfect strike. And another drive that took only a minute to 68 yards. There was the pump fake and the perfect strike to Bryant. These photographs taken by the Clemson student photography group and boy they've had a lot to shoot today. Four minutes into the third quarter. Clemson already has 509 yards and 48 points. Are you serious? Palmer's Deeps had a couple of big returns, gets a chance to bring this one back. Tobias Palmer. Is this kid any good? He's up to the 33. Amen. Let's come in Thornton. Thornton down to the 45 yard line. Rashard Hall, the safety, had to make the stop. Well, it looks like they got a good one in Shadrack Thornton out of Hinesville, Georgia. Zed told you in the first half they thought they were going to be able to redshirt him. And you always like to redshirt guys coming into the first year of the program. But out of necessity, he is playing. And boy, he's playing well. He's shown a lot of heart, he's shown some quickness and some speed. And one one of the reasons most coaches just refuse to play freshmen and especially play them on all three downs is because they can't pass protect and we've seen he can do that too. No, there's almost no running backs at the high school level that are dominant that do any form of pass blocking or are ever asked to. So it is such a foreign thing for young running backs. Pass to Watson underneath. It'll bring up a third down. And Clemson certainly doing a better job of communication on defense. Players talking to each other. They have been better in the last four games, but then the quality of their opponents has been down in the last four games. But the one thing that Brent Venables makes sure to point out when we were talking yesterday, yeah, the competition wasn't great, but we lined up better. We tackled in space better. We had more negative plays like this. And this is the second time on third and short that a play's been blown up right up the middle. This Brady defense. Jarrett came straight through. Brady Jarrett, who blew up the puller on the last play, this time just too quick to the inside. There was no way that the center, Wentz, was going to get over there. Now, I think you got to leave this ball in Glennon's hands. I think you're on some slants, a hitch, something short, but this has got to be Glennon. And Clemson comes with pressure, pressure trying to get there, and they block the pass. <laughs> Willard, the linebacker, got a hand up and knocked it down. The success they have had 
against Glennon is when they have brought pressure. Very timely call by Brett Venables. Nice job by Jonathan Willard. Willard's had a really nice ball game. The senior, weak side linebacker. You see him dip that shoulder, get the penetration, get the hand up. Wonderful call. Venables, for a couple of plays there, he was playing coverage, and he's thinking, okay, this guy's going to pick yeah. me apart. That coverage time. hasn't worked. Yeah, fourth and short, that was a wonderful call. Look at this play. Here's Unreal. one of these plays where everybody stands still, and it's a throwback to Ellington. Ellington inside the 30. How inventive is that? <laughs> I love that play. The defense sees guys not moving. And they don't know what hesitate. to do. Hesitate. Watch the entire offensive line. The center, Freeman snaps it. They all just stand around. Boyd runs the other way, and then all of a sudden, there are four offensive linemen standing around ready to block for the ball carry. Inside the 10 goes DJ Howard. This offense is something special. It to really watch. is. It really is. The, the amount of things that they do with different personnel, different formations, the speed that they go, they make you defend five quarters. You don't play four quarters when you play an offense like this. You have to defend it for what feels like five because of the number of plays. Humphreys. Nice job by Burris to close space and make the tackle. Big hit by Ricky Dowdy on Taj Boyd as he lets this go. Pressure's always going to be coming. Good clean hit yep, by Dowdy. Sure was. And then a little bit of that uh, sportsmanship that the ACC pushes forward. You don't mind picking a guy up after you've knocked him flat on his keister. I think that's a respect pickup too, though. <laughs> Boyd, <laughs> touchdown. Third rushing touchdown. You know, we were talking about Chad Morris. One thing to keep in mind, this is his fourth year of college football. But one I, year in Tulsa, two years here before this one. Fourth year. And right now, he's very close to the point he can name a job he might want in college football as a head coach. Clemson has raised the ante. It's 55-24. If you're on offense, this is a pretty good day. And we have 4-13. If you're on defense, in the third quarter. Palmer deep for the kickoff. So now you give Palmer a chance to return another kick. Starts at the three. Look at this kick. Tobias Palmer. Midfield and more needs one more block. And taken out of bounds again by Xavier Brewer. That's the second time he has saved a touchdown run. And Tobias Palmer had just brought it back for 81 yards. Talk what about a remarkable game he has had, Ed. And wonderful blocking. You could see all of the orange jerseys being bent as they were running down the field. Their lines were being bent to the right. And that's the way NC State has been returning it, is to that left side. So if Clemson, when they go to start breaking this film down, they may have a weakness on the right side of their coverage that they need to clean up. All he has done is set a school record for all-purpose yards, 423. What a remarkable game. Here's Thornton. Touchdown. Number two. Holy cow. It's like we're playing a video game, but I can't find the buttons where you hit for defense. So the 81-yard kickoff return sets up Thornton. But you've been talking about Thornton all day. How was that run? Terrific. Cut back, the finish. NC State's, I think, found themselves a long-term running back. Three touchdown drives of 18 seconds or less. <laughs> you can't get much faster. Palmer may have about 500 yards of total offense and two touchdowns in the kick return game as well. 
And it's 55-31 with 3.55 to go in the third quarter. Hard to imagine that we're done. The 423 all-purpose yards also an ACC record. Let's see if Martavis Bryant can match that one. Boy, picked off. Intercepted by Robert Smith. Interception by number 27. That is a heck of a play on defense, and he brings it back for 20 yards, and NC State will be able to set up shop again. Well, Earl Wolf does a fantastic job of baiting the quarterback. Watch, he's going to move to the middle here, right at the snap, and he's reading the eyes and then starts to bail right under it. Boyd never saw Wolf, who snuck over to his right, was not playing a deep safety. The deep safety was Bishop, who had bailed out, and Wolf played in the middle of the field, snuck one on Boyd. Boyd had no idea that he was hanging around that area, I don't think. I said, Smith, you're absolutely right. That was Wolf, first and goal for Glenn and NC State. Throw back, that's going to be a touchdown right in the hands of Mario Carter, who was wide open. And what great patience by Glennon. He's looking right, looking right, waiting for his tight end to come out on the delay. This kind of feels like what happened there in the first quarter, where it, it felt like Clemson was going to run away with this thing. And all of a sudden, you get a huge turnover on Clemson's side of the field. Remember, they had three of those in last year's loss to NC State. Things uh, start to change a little bit. Four one-play touchdown drives. Four. <laughs> Apparently, that's all they need. And that was a great call. That was a play they had not run. They set it up beautifully with Glennon just staring to his right, then calmly turning back and hitting the tight end that was wide open. Well, and the nice part about this is this is very similar to the play that Clemson ran where everyone stood around. This one, you slow play it, you slow play it, you slow play it, and it's all about patience until you can slide that tight end out across the formation and another nice, soft, catchable ball by Glennon. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about Chad Morris. A little credit here to Dana Bible, the offensive yes, coordinator at NC State. This is a guy who's been around the game forever. A wonderful offensive mind. You see that he has a few of these plays up his sleeve as well when they need them. 55-38. Jeez. How many one-play <laughs> touchdown drives? Four. Okay. Checking if that's still the right number. And Clemson will take a knee and start from the 25. When NC State started making a little run, Taj Boyd was not playing great. He became a little inaccurate, and they weren't able to move the ball. So let's see if Clemson responds here with a more crisp offensive series. He got his rhythm back after he stumbled some in the first half. And they'll start this possession with a handoff to Ellington. Lucas and Dowdy made the tackle. You know, for Earl Wolf, he's called the heart and soul of this defense. Interceptions are not really the big thing for him. It's been forced fumbles. He has eight in his career. Big hitter. Ellington, a little swing. Takes it out across the 30. That'll be a first down. What a nice job by Ellington there. This play was defended, absolutely dead defended. And he stretched it, stretched it, stretched it. And then because of his, he's so explosive when he puts his foot in the ground, but he stretched it until he could cut it back to pick up positive yards. Check it, it'll be third and four. There's the tight end, Ford running free in the secondary. One man to beat, Ford. Hits the pylon. It's a touchdown. 69 yards. 240 pounds rumbling out in space. Well, and unfortunately, it's a feast or famine for Earl Wolf. The safety that time, he had the interception earlier that time. He came up to try to make a play on this ball, couldn't do it. And what a nice finish by the tight end. Right foot inbounds, touches the pylon, perfect mechanics 
by the official right there in the pylon. You can see his eyes, seeing that the foot is in bounds, and then he comes over and finds that the ball hits the pylon. Now we're going to run out of records in this game, I think. We have 1,127 yards in total offense. We're not even in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Captain Zaro may be getting leg weary. <laughs> Hooks that one inside the left upright. Brandon Ford has just tied the school record. Eight touchdowns by a tight end. And that was certainly the biggest play of his season. Let's see, this game started, at, what, 335? It's almost 630. And we're not in the fourth three? No, we're not. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make that flight in LA or no, back to LA tonight out of Atlanta at 9:50. Dinner's on me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tobias Palmer, I'd find a way not to kick to this guy. Goes left again. Another seam. Tobias Palmer crossed 40 to the 43. Holy cow! This guy is going to start creeping towards 500 yards. Plus, he just creeped. Yeah, and we still have a minute 31 to go in the third quarter. Glennon, that'll pick up about nine to Mario Carter, the tight end. He's been very active today. He's got four catches. And Shuey at middle linebacker for Clemson. Such a nice story. A guy who. Had gotten up to 250 pounds last year. They were cross training him as a defensive end slash linebacker. Brent Venables comes in, and this young man put himself to work. He was recruited as a tight end out of Charlotte, North Carolina, by Duke, Wake, and Illinois. But he wanted to play linebacker. And the only school that even said, We'll give you a chance to play linebacker is here at Clemson. So he said, I'm going to Clemson to play linebacker. And they're going to let the clock run out on the third quarter and talk about it while we have a timeout. 62 38, still a quarter to go from Clemson. Ready to start the fourth quarter in a 62-38 ball game. 13 touchdowns, three field goals, 1,152 yards in total offense, and 152 offensive plays. Glennon standing tall in a pocket, floats it, threw it on the wrong side, had a man out there. He had Quentin Payton open, but Payton was turned inside. Glennon threw it outside, and he stumbled a little bit trying to get back there. Quentin Christensen, or excuse me, Quentin Christian had very nice coverage, though. He had turned and run from that outside linebacker spot on the strong side. So it had to have been a perfect throw to complete it. Blitz coming, they pick it up, and the pass incomplete. The success they have had against Glennon is when they have sent the blitz because just coming with four guys, he has been able to sit in that pocket and really tear them up. And you heard Dabo Sweeney tell Janine at halftime that the reason they're bringing that pressure is to make Glennon throw it just a little sooner than he wants. And that's exactly what you're talking about. If you let a guy like that stand around, he'll pick you apart. So the blitz isn't necessarily to get the sack. It's to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand just a touch sooner. In only two years, he's already fourth all-time in touchdown passes, fourth in total offense, fourth in passing yards. He has just been terrific. Had a chance to run here, throws instead. That one was dropped. It looked like Quentin Payton should have been able to make a catch, but Brewer is there to get a hand in. Give Brewer some credit. That you, uh, NC State has had problems with the drops all year. But let's see Brewer get in there. Yeah, that ball need, needs to be put away. I, and, and I don't want to take anything away from Brewers. A nice game, especially on kickoff coverage where he saved a couple yeah. of touchdowns. But that's another ball that needs to be caught. Fourth and ten, no question they have to go for it at this point. Thornton will go out as a wide receiver. Blitz coming. Glennon hangs in the pocket, straight down the middle of Palmer. Touchdown. 
boy, and hey, they had some busts in the secondary. Palmer running free in the middle of the defense. And there was confusion. You could see right there Brent Venables with that look on his face. The middle linebacker, Spencer Shuey, right before the snap, ran over and was trying to adjust where people were lined up. And I think trying to tell them what the coverage was. A complete blown coverage by Clemson. The numbers on Tobias Palmer. Total offense, 496 yards. It's a wide receiver and a kick return. <laughs> he has 219 yards receiving on seven catches. It's a staggering number. Well, you can put up staggering numbers when the defense doesn't line up correctly or play a coverage that was called by their defensive coordinator. That's Brent Venables. That's the D coordinator. Our, our research guys are going crazy trying to catch up with, with all these records. Tobias Palmer, the second most in the football bowl subdivision, 496 yards in all-purpose yards. I mean, that's just crazy. Robert, thank you. Clemson back to work. And it's Roderick McDowell fighting for extra yards. Should have a first down out across the 35-yard line. Third down and five. They'd like to keep this drive alive, especially with NC State getting back into the ball game, and they do with Bryant, Martavis Bryant with his second big play. And Bryant, a guy who suffered a horrible groin injury in the weight room earlier in the season, had to have surgery. Finally starting to come back, a big tall receiver. So this guy a sophomore and starting to get into the flow a little bit. First down Tigers at the NC State 38 yard line. DJ Howard the tailback on this series. Humphreys is on the wing. Howard will get the carry runs into three. And red and white Howard. clad tacklers for NC State. Well this is a way different team than Clemson in 2011. And when we were meeting yesterday with Dabo Sweeney he said you know last year we had 42 freshmen on the team that were playing who learned what it's like to peak too early. So this year it's been about weekly improvement and we have seen the weekly improvement and all of the coaches here said this is not the same nine and one team that went and lost in Raleigh last year to NC State. Boyd on that read gives it off to Ellington down to the 35. But you keep another third down here. You keep playing this forward for Clemson. If they win against South Carolina, get into a BCS bowl game, second year in a row. What does this team look like next season if all the guys come back they expect to come back? Pretty good. Clemson has racked up a season high 694 yards so far, and we still have 11 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Change the formation after they look to the sideline. Ellington goes behind Taj Boyd, and Boyd wants to throw. Pump fake goes deep. Hopkins incomplete. Now the fans are really going to be upset because Amerson was face guarding, but that's perfectly legal. Well, and Hopkins is the guy who puts his left arm up first and initiates the contact. And so that even though Amerson, see how both guys have their arms up? Awfully close, awfully close. You, you don't, in college football, you don't have to come and find the ball, but it looked to me like Amerson was kind of running through Hopkins there. I, I think potentially you throw pass interference there. Awfully close. Not, I, I don't disagree completely with the no call, but I think maybe you throw that one. High short punt, fair catch made inside the 15 yard line. The Boo Birds are out at Death Valley. <laughs> as, as crazy as this game has felt and felt like Clemson's run away from it, run away from NC State, this thing's not over. Thornton rambling through the secondary up to the 42. Glennon, by the way, has thrown for 448 yards so far in this game. And, and the guys in orange are starting to walk around a lot with their arms at their sides, having that look like, 
I hope the clock runs faster than this offense. And if, if NC State can hit a couple of plays, you wonder if mentally this defense is checked out a bit. It is more physically taxing to play defense than it is to play offense. And they have played defense for a long, long time. Underwood makes the catch very close to the first down sticks. I mean, this is starting to look easy. Thornton's starting to get four, five, six yard runs that were one yard runs earlier. Glennon's getting the ball out. NC State starting to put their foot on the gas a little bit. If I were Brett Venables, I'd almost think about another timeout, almost like in basketball. Well, it's part of the theory of running this offense is by the time you get to anywhere in the second half, you've got them on their heels. You've got them sucking for oxygen. Little crossing pattern is going to pick up about seven, and that's the Winkles again. You don't think of NC State as being because they still huddle, they still kind of get together. You don't think of them as running a lot of plays, but they're actually number one in the ACC for a number of plays run per game, so they can play this game as well. Really, you'd like to see. The hurry up version of what they're doing right now because they don't have a lot of time. They're down three scores no matter what they do. And that one is dropped. It was a perfect throw. Pass intended for number 89, Benson Brown. Benson Brown, the third string tight end, couldn't hold it. Well, you're definitely in four down. You're going to run four downs anywhere on the field at this point in the game. So maybe you look at Palmer up top. He's been the guy that they've been looking through for in the long throws. Pressure coming. Ball's loose. Still loose. NC State got it back, but it's all the way back at their 48-yard line. And Vic Beasley was the guy who got to Glennon again the second time he's been able to drill him from the blind side. And the third sack by Beasley in the game. And Beasley, a guy who, if they can get a little bit of weight on this guy, he's about 225 pounds. If they can get him to 240 or 250, they, they think they're going to have another standout defensive end. Well, at 225, he's doing okay already. Fourth and 12, there's no choice. They've got to go for it. And one hand catch by Mario Carter. Glennon hung it up there, and the tight end ran it down and made the catch with one hand. What a play. And that was Tony Stewart in one on one coverage. He bought the fake to the outside, and after all of the drops for NC State all season, all of a sudden Carter, who had a bad drop against Florida State, Makes a tough catch to keep the drive alive. Glennon with a career high 493 yards and nearly had more as that pass intended for Richard Smith just off his fingertips. And what a throw by Glennon under pressure again. I know it's a broken record, but watch Glennon gets enough on this ball as he's about to get hit, and this should be a touchdown for Richard Smith. Got to make that catch. Second down. Blitz coming. Looked like seven guys. Underwood didn't notice the blitz, so he pulls up. And so now, if you're NC State, you know what Brett Venables is going to do once you get inside the third. He's going to start bringing the heat. So you've got third and ten. You're thinking four downs here. I think this is an opportunity to run a draw or a screen, something that you know you're going to get that pressure. And if you slip one guy, maybe you get the first, but at least you can get a positive yardage play. And you still need three scores, so a field goal is a possibility here. Good call. Pressure coming. Glennon throws. That's incomplete. It was short. As Quentin Payton went to the outside, the ball was about two yards shy. Yeah, but you, I think, Mike, you make a good point. You're sitting here at 17, and you've got a fourth and 10. I, I think you may want to kick this field goal. Yeah, this is this is exactly what Tom O'Brien's doing. Because if, if you don't get it, the ball game is over. Right, and, and so, it's a three-score game. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so I, this is the right decision. Keep, keep your club in the ball game. See if you can get a stop or a turnover or something fast. I think this is the right call. 
Sadie from 40. He's hit from 32 and missed from 49. Nice kick by Sadie. And now NC State within two scores and still a ton of time left in this game. Welcome back to Death Valley. We're at 62 to 48. That's what I said. 62 <laughs> to 48. And of course, Georgia Tech beat North Carolina last week, 68 to 50, which set the all-time scoring record at 118. <laughs> and we've got 110. It may last a week. <laughs> well, that happened in the afternoon, so a little more than a week. So this would be the record for a day slash night game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First and 13 because it's a foul from or a marked off from the spot of the foul. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And these are just crazy numbers. 180 total plays, over 1,300 yards. Glennon with a career high 493 yards passing. Palmer, the second best ever all purpose yard total in college football. Boyd, eight total touchdowns. Five passes and three rushes. Palmer, he won't be second all time. Now the record, he, I don't know if he's going to get there. It's 578 by Emmett White of Utah State back in 2000 against New Mexico. I'm not sure he's going to get into that territory. Well, if Clemson would score and he had a chance for a <laughs> kick return, return, yeah, good point. He might have it. This is only about a half yard shy of another first down. And first downs all that Clemson cares about. And I just think, I, I think what Chad Morris sees is NC State defensively just at it. There's no way you can defend this many plays and chase this many ball right. carriers and have anything left. You know, Nick Saban made some waves a few weeks ago when he was talking about hurry up offense and we should talk about the rules. I don't, I don't agree with that, but after this play, we'll get into that just for a second. Boy. It's got the first down, and that means they can work off another two and a half minutes on the clock. I, I love this type of offense. I, I think the game has changed forever, and the genie's out of the bottle, and, and I like it personally. However, the one thing Nick Saban said that we do have to at least consider, there is a safety issue here. When you have to defend 90 or 100 plays, you're not moving your feet as well at the beginning. Your feet are on the ground, so more bo bodies are going to start rolling in, blowing out knees. You can't unring the of bell, things. though. No, what I agree. Do? What I, do you do? I, it, you, you're going to have to have three strings of defense. You're going to have to have a place where you can recruit and have a third-string linebacker that can come into play. I just don't think you can defend it. If you only have 15 or 20 defenders that you can roll in against these types of offense, I don't care how good those guys are. When they have to defend 90 or 100 plays with these types of athletes, I just I don't think you can do it. McDowell gets the carry. I think it's a tribute to how good this offense is and how good the skill players are in it. That was play 100. That is just a, a stunning number. It's a school record. I would be shocked if Todd Boy carries this ball. I would not want my quarterback carrying again after that hit by Wolf. I can't believe he's back in the game. Well, I think it's just going to be to hand it off. I think it's a ball. I think it's a ball security issue. This is the guy who handles the ball more often. There's no way he's carrying. McDowell goes straight ahead. Picks up maybe a yard. Another tackle from Ricky Dowdy, the weak side linebacker. And you don't want to do anything here but let the clock melt. Maybe even, well, you're going to run a play here, but I, I would assume with Boyd, the hit that he took, this is going to be, maybe they'll take the timeout so they don't have to get the penalty because if you pick up the first, obviously, it's over after that. I hope you don't feel numb from all the numbers that we're giving you, but this is a, a huge numbers game. 750 yards in total offense for Clemson. Fourth down, Humphreys end around. And he's got a first down. Well, now the official comes in, does not give him a very good spot. They may have to measure. No, it is a first down. So the clock will restart. 
And Clemson does not have to run another play. And, and a very quality win for Clemson. It does matter on the national stage looking at the at-large games like this, putting up big numbers. So a good quality win for Clemson in their BCS resume. What a ball game. 100 points in Death Valley. Once again, the final score, Clemson 62, North Carolina State 48. For Ed Cunningham, Janine Edwards, and our entire hardworking crew, hope you enjoyed this one. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now, let's send you back to the studio.